Straight out of San Francisco, this week's episode is sponsored by Spice Tribe. Spice Tribe is all about traceable, non-GMO, and single-origin spices that benefit the farmers, the foragers, and the earth. Travel-inspired blends and unique recipes to cater to your creative side and inspire you to cook healthy meals because after this podcast i think you're going to want to be cooking some healthy meals spicetribe.com use code ted jones world for 30 percent off your order ted jones messed with the wrong melon farmers ted jones i also call him the eighth wonder of the real estate world ted jones who knows you know it could be ted jones the ted jones world podcast What is up, everyone? Episode 46, Ted Jones here. What is up? I'm, I'm super pumped. We got a great guest. Producer Pat is here. He's not on screen, but Pat, how are you, bro? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm great. Do you eat anything special today? Did I eat anything special? Yeah, did you? No, just, just the same old. What same old? Same like avocado wrap like you had last time? Yeah, some avocados, a lot of water, a little bit of coffee. Love your avocados, man. And hopefully we'll find out if um, avocado is an appropriate food. So we have here bodybuilding champion in the building, Latif Arnold. Latif, all the way from Kansas. Bro, how are you, man? Thank you. Thank you for listening into that full intro. How are you? I'm doing well, man. All is well. Uh, just left work and I, I had to hop on the Ted Jones World Show, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Latif, um, my man. So I think we, I just want to get straight down to it. Let's do it. Um, it's been a while since you and I have spoken. And I think the thing that really got me, um, really got me attracted to, you know, everything you're doing is that bod, man. Um, <laughs> saw, saw the bod that you're working with, bro, entering a bunch of bodybuilding competitions. Uh, I know earlier on in life that you were super into fitness, but it seems that ever since you moved to Kansas, you got super serious about that. So why don't you tell us a little bit about living in Kansas City and um, working in tech, I guess, during the day or, you know, whenever, whenever you're not bodybuilding, man. So just tell us a little bit about what your day looks like and how you choose to carve up that bod, bro. Yeah, so um, moved to Kansas City in 2017, um, working at Honeywell as a project manager. So... Uh, specifically with Honeywell, we help work with um, building non-nuclear components for nuclear weapons for the government, right? So essentially all the widgets that go in that don't make the boom stuff, we, 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 we essentially make all of that. Um, so I've been working there for about three years now. And, you know, Kansas City is fun, right? It's a growing city. It's pretty much like a, a diamond in the rough, essentially, right? Coming from, you know, either coast, you're like, well, what's the Midwest? It's nothing but, you know, country people with no teeth or something like that. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's actually like a really popping city. So much fun. Um, one of the biggest things that hit me when I first moved here was um, how people are, are just so um, welcoming, right? People really? come to you like, hey, how are you? Like, like I want to get to know you. But coming from the Northeast, you're like, well, what's your, like, what's your angle? What do you want from me? And that was something that was hard for me to get adjusted to. But yeah, it's, it's, it's just been fun. Like the cost of living is lower and it's just right. been so, so much fun to just like understand like what I can do with my money and just like play around stuff. So yeah, right. Um, so, I, so things for the most part, I mean, in Kansas, or Kansas city, like compared to like an East coast or West coast, things are more spread out right in, in the middle of the country for like, in terms of like you getting from your apartment to the gym, like how, how long does that take every day? So back home, it'd be like five minutes every, every. And you're from, and you're from initially, sorry, you're from Connecticut initially. Yeah. Stanford, Connecticut. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm from. Um, to get anywhere here, it takes about 15 minutes. Okay. Right. It's always just 15 minutes. The grocery store, the gym, it's just 15 yeah. minutes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's like what Pat and I have been talking about. Like since we moved into our parents' house for that un unforeseeable future, we're just like, <laughs> everything is an effort, dude. It's like, yes. you can't just like go outside and like, hang out with your boys or like get a coffee. You got to hop in the car, go get a coffee, get an Uber. If you get too wasted at the coffee shop, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, continue. Yeah, well, I mean, usually like the daily grind is going to work get out about like four thirty-five, and then hitting the gym. Uh, the gym usually takes about, it depends on what I'm doing, depends on where I am in prep, but that can take roughly between like an hour and a half to two to three hours, depending on where I am. Um, so yeah, it's just like, a concerted effort, man, like a five day split working on each body part. And like, 
really trying to become like a surgeon mechanic, like when I'm at the gym, right? Not trying to rush through my reps, just really concentrating. And that's really how I help like develop that muscle and like coming back home and really focusing on that diet too, just grinding every single day, you know? Okay. And, um, you know, I, ever since being in quarantine, I'd say like the last four months, I'd say for the most part, I've been like, I've, um, I mean, I've liked fitness my whole life. I was on the tennis team for a couple of years. And um, I I guess I was, for the most part, consistently inconsistent with it. You know, I'd be working out three to four times a a week for a good stretch of weeks and then would take a few days off. And then it was just kind of like spiral and such. But I feel like ever since I had my jaw surgery, um, I had my jaw surgery anniversary uh, like three days ago, two or three days ago, right, Pat? Something like that. Two or three days ago. And um, ever since, like, I was able to uh, just kind of change my diet because I couldn't really fully eat things, um, I just got more and more into fitness. And, like, the last four months, I've just been focusing kind of on, like, lifting and running and, like, not really eating meats and stuff. But do you think that there's, like, anything specific that, like, I I don't want to say the average person or just, like, a, a person who goes to the gym pretty consistently on a weekly basis, is there, like, an aha moment? Do you think that happened for you where you were just like, all right, well, I think like this is really making me happy. I want to keep doing this. Yeah. Um, so they usually say that, you know, your body starts to, to develop within like three to four weeks. Um, so, you know, initially I went to the gym, I was working out, doing my thing, pressing, moving some heavy weight, and then, you know, not seeing any results because you come back home and you're like, oh, this pump is amazing. This looks good. And then you wake up in the morning, like, well, where did it all go? Right, right, right. Um, but I would say like after that month, the sixth, the seventh week, I'm like, okay, I'm starting to see some definition coming. Okay. Now let's keep it going. Right. So with that stayed in the gym and then people start telling you, Hey bro, you're looking bigger. All those pecs are looking nice. Those shoulders are looking good. Okay. That's the feedback that you're looking for, you know? So then you just keep pushing it and you keep pushing it and keep, and you keep pushing it. So where, where I was in in my, in my bulk was um, more, initially like where I started was I was about maybe about 20, 25% body fat. Right. So there was a whole bunch of muscle under it, but you couldn't really see it. Right. So, um, I had to give a shout out to my coaches first. Right. So I was right. like coaches through this whole process. It wasn't just, yeah. so if you could just, if you can also talk about that and how you kind of got a team together, cause I, I definitely see that you're working with a, um, a couple or a few guys. Yeah, for sure. So, um, funny story. Um, I was on Facebook, um, just like dealing around and then I found this one guy in Kansas City dude was shredded muscles and everything right dude had a coupon code for uh this this meal prep company out in Kansas City and it was like 20% off and I was like I'm just gonna steal his his you know coupon code and just get me some food so I started doing that and you know getting my meal prep food and all this stuff and then I finally hit him up and I'm like hey I'm interested in like you know bulking up getting more size on getting my muscles you know stuff and he was like hey let's have a, a conversation so we chatted um, turns out we ended up not just bulking. We did the competition diet, right? Where we're going to pick out a show out like, you know, 12 months later, and we're going to do the whole process to it. Um, right. And was this a particular show that you actually had, um, just done recently? It wasn't. Okay. Sorry. It wasn't right. So, um, we started this, it was August of like 2019, right? So that was like the summertime, had a girlfriend going out, partying, drinking. So it wasn't really on my plan. Right. So it finally came to a point where it was around like, I would say November where I was like, I really want to get serious now. Right. After Thanksgiving, I'm not going to drink. I'm going to cut that out first. Right. So started cutting that out and really started grinding in the gym. Right. Um, Stayed on top of my food, stayed on top of my workouts. And then we started seeing some big changes. Right. So bulking up, muscles was popping on abs were still popping as I was gaining uh, body weight too. So I'm like, okay, we're looking good. So then, um, you know, we're looking to, you know, get prep for the show. So the first show I was supposed to do was June, uh, June 8th, a couple of days before my birthday. June, so sorry, June 8th, 2020. So like, this 2020, past, exactly. okay, so like six exactly. weeks ago. Yep. So um, then COVID hit, right? So we're like, damn, I can't get gym. I can't do all this stuff. But my coaches are like, find a way. So went to Lowe's, got a big bucket of sand, put that in there, right? Uh, rented some weights from my gym and we had some crazy looking home workouts going nice on. bro that's how you got i mean that's how they that's how like the true guys really get down and dirty with it yeah. 
Yeah. So like after work, you know, cause we're working remote at the time, right? Yeah. After, Ruben and I came in, bumped some pop smoke, just getting it in. Yeah, right? buddy. RIP pop smoke. That's great, man. All right. So I mean, basically it's just getting down to the consistency. It was, it. it was like a lot of people were making excuses, right? Like I would just come and work out. And then on the other end, mind you, I was doing about an hour, an hour and a half of cardio too. Right. Yeah. There's no treadmill yeah. or anything like that. So I'm outside just walking, right. Jogging. Nice. Doing that in the morning to help uh, manage my time throughout the day. So you have the cardio, then you have the workouts, and then you have the diet. So this was just a, a flowing, right? It was, it was just flowing and all the momentum was coming too. So then I would send my check-ins to my coaches on a weekly basis. And then like, bro, you're looking good. Okay. Let's keep going. Okay. Go like, like, let's keep pushing cardio. So then, you know, I started dropping weight now. Right. So now I'm right. one night. So where were you at? Sorry, just to get your, um, just so everyone can kind of get a, you know, a sense of kind of your measurements because you're sitting down right here. You're just a floating head for the most part with a nice art piece behind you, by the way. We like that. I don't know if you guys are watching on YouTube, listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, but Latif has got a nice piece of uh, painting behind him. But uh, Tief, yeah, so just quickly, just, I guess, break down kind of your measurements to when you weren't happy with your height and weight and to, to now, to today. Like, what, what are you weighing? What is your height? Yeah, so uh, when I started my cut, I was around like 193-ish. Body fat was around like, I would say 20 to 25%. When, when, and then by the time I got to my show, funny enough, about 165, um, body fat was close to about 4%. And how, how tall are you? About 5'9". Okay. okay. Yeah. Damn, dude. So you really freaking cut. Yeah, yeah. You really cut. Um, what do you think was the biggest part of that besides diet? Because I know, I know that n number one, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I feel like I've done a solid amount of re research to know that it's, it's really the calories. Am I right? It is. It is. It's the calories. A lot of it is the mental game, right? Because, you know, it's funny enough, my, my one buddy who kind of got me into bodybuilding, he, he made this one post on Instagram a couple of years ago and was like, yo, bodybuilding is lonely. Yeah, it totally. is really yeah. a lonely sport because like you're doing all this by yourself. Yeah. You have workout partners, but it's just like the mental toughness, like being able to do this every single day, you're sore. You have to go back out and do more cardio and you're like, damn, I don't want to do this again. Right. And then as you're cutting weight, your hormones start to change too. Right. Because mind you, you're not taking in as many calories as you should be. Right. So now like my carbs are super low. Right. I'm, I have no fat in my body right now. So I am very, very moody. Testosterone has dropped low, right? So now I'm just trying to manage before I get to my show. And it's just being able to kind of endure that for the six weeks or the seven weeks, however long that, that spans until you get to your show. And then obviously it's over after that. But it's just like, I was just so weak mentally. I would have to go into work, right? Have conversations with people. I would not be able to legit have a conversation with Jesus. snacking on something or just like being irritable it, it was it was so, a problem but but for you you feel like it i mean it's been all worth it when you won that when did you win that competition how many weeks ago uh that was two weeks ago so yep. can you tell us why don't you tell us a little bit about that just in terms of like how you one would even get to a competition do you send pictures so or something like, how, do, how does it work? I mean, you had this competition in uh, Springfield, Missouri. Mm -hmm. And um, now I guess you're looking into getting your pro card and such. And also just to sprinkle on a little bit about what you were talking about, like the discipline and body being lonely and stuff. You and I had briefly spoken before uh, the podcast the other day about how I understand, you know, where you're coming from in terms of like, if you're really trying to get to a point where your your focus is your body and sculpting you're not eating that those chips and salsa when everybody's having the chips and salsa you're not having a casual beer after lunch there's just so many things that really go into looking like you and pat can, I, can we can we pull up these pictures right here that i that i sent that i sent over look at this guy this guy looks amazing latif can't see it right now but we got it on here for, on the screen uh, for you on YouTube. So T, please go ahead. Go ahead, man. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So for the show, essentially you have to uh, get your MPC card, right. Which is, you know, bodybuilding qualification card. Um, and then you, um, essentially sign up because it's an amateur show. So anyone can really sign up. Um, so mind you, the show that I was supposed to do was, you know, uh, 
June 8th, right? That got canceled due to COVID, so they pushed it back. And then I was supposed to do a show in Arkansas. Um, however, they canceled that due to COVID. So my, me and my teammates, we actually did this impromptu show, the one in Springfield, Missouri. So um, pretty much just paid for it, right? And then entered the show. So the day of Friday, so Friday, went down there, did our check-ins, um, and then they put us in our class and then we got tanned, right? Me as a black man, I'm like, why do I need to get tan? What does that even right. feel like? Yeah, right? and you also, dude, also you have really white teeth too. You're like, why do I need extra tan? Keep going. Exactly. So that was like weird in itself, right? So we go in there, I'm getting tan. Essentially what it looks like is me coming back from like a Puerto Rico or like a Costa Rica where okay. I'm like toning like darker all around, okay? And is that, just to, is that just to oil you up, like, regardless if you're white or black? I mean, is, is that kind of the, the it point? It was more so to, like, even you out for more gloss. So, essentially, we put on a first coat the first day, right? And then the second day, actually, like, go time, right? They put the second coat on, and then right before we go on stage, they gloss you up. So, now you're glimmering, right? So, now all the, <laughs> creases, right? the creases in your abs, the creases in your back are popping. Nice. Right? And then they angle... So they angle the lights down a specific way so it hits you where everyone can see that as well. Damn. This, so this sounds like the mirror that like we all need in our in our bathroom. Yeah. That's so, hilarious. So, uh, so Latif, uh, Latif you, you talked a little bit um, just right there about, um, you know, being a black, being a black man, obviously. And um, how does that how, how does that translate for you in a place like Kansas City? When people kind of think of the middle of the country, maybe they think more so um, people who potentially could be prejudiced. But as you said initially, uh, when you move to Kansas, you've m never really met friendlier people. So what what's kind of the disconnect between like the how people really see the, um, the South or Midwest? Excuse me. Um, I would say experiencing it, right? Because they call it the flyover state, so no one really goes there. Um, I would say from my perspective, um, I've, I've never really felt uncomfortable there, right? Everyone was like, and like I said, like very, very welcoming. You just have to be there to experience it. And obviously, you know the way I portray myself, right? Um, well-dressed guy, always well-mannered. That also plays a factor into it as well, because there's, there's always going to be hoodlums wherever you go either way. Yeah. Right? But it's the way that you present yourself. And that's the important thing. Right. Well, and, and I think also like having a just a demeanor and like an appearance like yourself. I mean, you're obviously a well respectable person. And um, yeah, I, I mean, I can't really speak too much on it. And obviously, like it's a sensitive topic just with everything that's been going on in the world and the racial injustices in the country for so freaking long, dude. Right. Um, but, uh, it, it really is great to have you on and, you know, come and you're comfortable enough to just speak on it, but, um, it, just kind of get, but get back. I want to get back in just to like the bodybuilding aspect. Okay. So like when you go to these shows, are you like dehydrating yourself for like a few days, like getting the veins popping? What's like the full mindset? What's like your, uh, what's your diet? 72 days, excuse me, 72 hours up to competition. And yeah. what is your diet? and training regiment like a month until competition yeah so about month a before month. competition excuse me. yeah so let's let, let's start that month out right so the month out is and mind you coaches are watching you on a weekly basis right so we're seeing if we need to tweak things but month out we should be pretty low on carbs by now right because we should be pretty lean um cardio should be pretty high up depending on where you are so that was the point in time i was doing about seven, 70 minutes of cardio post-workout now, when you're talking about 70 minutes of cardio, are you doing nonstop jogging at a nine minute pace mile or are you walking at a 15 minute pace mile? How does that work? What kind of cardio? It depends, right? People's bodies react differently. So for me, I cut pretty well. So yeah, I had about, <laughs> about, I was walking, about speed walking, like New York pace. Okay. About four. I think my speed was about a four and then my incline was about like 15, right? So I'm moving up a hill. And you have, you have like hills and stuff to kind of walk up for the most part around at where the time, you were. Right? So oh. the, our gyms opened back up. So it was a treadmill. I mean, it was, yeah, it was a treadmill at the time. But when I was like COVID time, how do you wait where it is? So one of the problems that I've seen with a lot of other bodybuilders is that when they're cutting, obviously you lose strength because you don't have as much energy. But if you drop your weight too much, that would then correlate with the, with the muscle loss as well. 
right. because there's no need for your muscle to hold that kind of weight if, if it's right. pleasant, right? So, um, like, for the, I guess, for example, like a, a perfect example, like you see all these marathon runners, they, they literally look like they don't have a, a speck of fat, a fat on their body. And then you look at like these sprinters in the Olympics, they have huge, the enormous bull thighs and like they're jacked. Just because I guess um, it's more of a focus on like a, a quick motion that like requires a lot of strength. Right. Exactly. Yep. Um, so as we're getting closer to the show now, right, it depends on where you are. So two weeks out, now we started cutting my cardio back down because we don't want to lean me out too much, right? Because we want to save myself and save my energy for the show. So at this point in time, I was eating about still about five meals, right? Um, protein was about, let's say six to eight ounces of, of protein, maybe about half a cup of rice. If how that. much, when you talk about six to eight ounces of protein compared to how much you were weighing, what you said, sorry, what'd you say your weight was right now that you were like, one sixty five. at 165. So what, when you say six to eight ounces of, uh, protein, how much is that? Like how many grams of that per day is that compared to your 165 weight? Um, let me see. So that was you said grams. Yeah. I don't know. If I, is that, is that like, not, is that not a good way to be measuring protein? You should be measuring by ounces or what? Um, so I have my scale and I, I live and die by my scale. You live and die by the ounces. Right, right, right. By ounces, right. Cause my coach says you're eating six ounces. That's, that's what I'm eating. Okay, cool. Got it. Right, right, right. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. Cause then you can just have the ounces also in other foods and other exactly. forms. Yep. And then you, you're able to weigh it kind of on the, the same scale. So right. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. So essentially, right, you always want to keep your protein really like stable. That's the one thing that really doesn't change. Your carbs are the one thing that, that, that you fluctuate, right? And the uses of them change as well. So at the point in time that I was cutting, we switched over to a lot of white rice because we want the insulin spike, right? We need that energy with whatever we can get from it because I'm so lean at that point in time, it won't really do anything for me, right? So um, two weeks out, Cardio was probably down to at least 20 minutes per se, right? And um, at this point in time, it was pretty much just trying to save as much energy as I could, right? So I'm going through, I'm going to the gym. I am lethargic as all hell, bro. I'm trying to lift, weight's not moving. So I'm just trying the best that I can, right? There's points in time where I honestly had to cheat on my diet a little bit, where I had to like eat a Pop-Tart before I went to the gym because I had just had no energy. And also you, what you're trying to do is lift as much as possible with eating as little as possible. Exactly. Okay. Right. So, um, there were a couple of points in time where I texted my coach. I'm like, dude, I, I just got to eat a pop tart. I need some form of energy. Right. Yeah. And at that point in time, you can like see my face was just chiseled, like just the diet face. Right. I look just <laughs> like a mess. Right. Um, but so let's talk about the 72 hours before, right? So it's usually business as usual for my team, right? So we're drinking water, all that different type of stuff. The day of, or the Friday, right? The Friday before the show, there you go. Um, we start reducing our water right there, okay? Wait, so wait, wait, when, when? About the day before the show, that, so that Friday, okay? So we start reducing the water there and then we start increasing carbs. So carbs start going up, right? So you're drinking, so you're eating like a cup of a cup of rice now. I'm like, oh yes, my body needs this, right? So I'm eating a cup of rice every single meal. And bro, when I tell you, I came back home, I took a nap, I woke up, my body was just pumped, filled. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is what I needed. And that's exactly what happens the day of the show too, right? Is as you're cutting that water, right? And you're increasing your carbs, your carbs are filling your muscles back up, right? So instead of, wait, instead of the water filling your muscles back up? Yep. So then essentially, like when you think about the muscle, your muscles expanding, right? Against your skin, that's already tight because you have no body fat. That's where the pump look starts to come into play. All right. So then, so then you add on the spray tan, you add on the gloss, and then you add on the little pump up before the show, bro, it's a serious look. It's nice. an easy look. And that, and that, it sounds like that's what you, that's what you have been working for for a year. That, yeah. that kind of, that wake up from that nap, big pump, no? Yeah, exactly. And it was crazy. Like my coach has said, you know, Hey, we're going to dehydrate you a little bit. We're going to take your water away from you. We're going to give you more carbs. I'm like, okay, we'll, we'll see how that looks. Yeah. I wake up, I look in the mirror. I'm like, why are my veins popping so much? Why do my shoulder blades look so big? Right? Like it was, it was that kind of feeling. And, um, it was great to have like my coach backstage with me. 
because, you know, he's telling me, hey, do your push-ups, do your curls, do all this different kind of stuff. Run back and get tanned again. I got tanned maybe about five times over to spray over and over and over again, right? So he is there watching my body. As I'm done pumping up, bro, it was like, a, it was like, a, it, it's like something clicked where I just became so cocky and confident where I was just like, oh, I'm going to fuck these guys up. Yeah, and you did. And, and I got on stage and it just, it just translated that way. Because I thought I'd be scared, right? It was my first show, seeing a lot of people, seeing the judges. I just walked out there and I just killed it, bro. And that's nice, what I was looking for. Right, exactly. And then all that hard work paid off. And I think ultimately, um, which I feel like I'm slowly getting the bug for too, is just like the, the feeling you get after, um, after doing something difficult in the day is always rewarding. You know, yeah. uh, I've, I've spoken to my grandma multiple times who listens to the podcast. Hello, grandma. I hope you're listening. You got to go out for a walk, grandma. You got to get those steps going. But seriously, um, it's, it's just nice that health and fitness are, is really coming to the forefront, especially during a time like now where so many people are sick and people are really afraid of dying. Uh, I, I guess we'll quickly talk about the coronavirus because it's happening and it sucks. Uh, are people wearing masks in Kansas City? So how's, how's that working? Yeah, we are actually. So it's mandated in Kansas City that we have to wear masks wherever we go. Uh, you go into the grocery store, you go to the gas station, you have to wear masks, um, even at work. So, you know, work opened up for me now. So I'm going back into the office. You know, before I get through the door, we get temperature scanned. And then we also get masks to wear as well. Um, one thing they've also implemented was one one way walkways, right? So you can only walk one way where you can't cross, right? So they have to like set up the whole building to and walk. like arrows pointing with like <laughs> lights on the side of it, like a like a freaking airplane. Yeah, exactly. Oh man, it's just so different. Like I mean, how the world is now. Basketball actually just started today for all you basketball fans. I guess all three hundred and fifty people in that bubble had to test negative like twice insane and then they did it so they finally started uh but you know sports are looking to come back u.s open still hopefully happening they canceled uh another tennis event that's like a week and a half before the u.s open hopefully that doesn't really affect the u.s open in general because u.s open tennis is always super fun to watch but the kansas city chiefs man your boy patrick mahomes just signed a massive contract close to 500 mil they won the super bowl last year so were, were you there during the celebrations? What's it like? What's the atmosphere like? It was, it was wild. It was wild to say the least. Um, so we were watching the game somewhere called Power and Light. So that's like our downtown area where they have all the bars and it, it's popping there, right? So everyone is just there wearing red and we have this massive, massive screen, right? So, you know, obviously we're down a little bit and, you know, people were losing you know, faith and we started coming back and bro, once we won, it was the craziest thing I've ever experienced in my life, right? Everyone's like, let's go down to Westport, which is like another area in Kansas City. Let's uh -huh. party. Like people were not looking to rest at all. <laughs> Wait, also in Kansas, I mean, were people just Ubering down to like the center or like were people jogging? How do people get there? People weren't driving drunk teeth, were they? <laughs> No, they, they, they weren't, <laughs> but, but <laughs> dude, it was, it was, it was crazy because by the time we won, everyone tried to hop in Ubers and go down to the other area, but that wasn't working. Right. So then people just started running, which made no sense because it was about like an hour walk from where we were. Right. So yeah, it was, it was, it was crazy, but the parade part was crazy. So the parade was, the uh, parade was, uh, what the following, the next like the day. Well, the next day was probably Monday. No weekend i think it was like a tuesday or something right 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 but day was freezing however um first things first we have a video where a guy was trying to moon people in a tree fell out the tree it's on youtube yeah. <laughs> we gotta check this uh, out I, everyone listening go ahead barricade. yep so 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 someone tried to drive through a barricade um there was just a whole bunch of shenanigans that happened that day it was it was amazing travis kelsey right was given the tight end yes drunk just belligerent right and you can hear him all the way maybe about four miles down from what he uh -huh. was it was just it was it was just a shit show right um pat mahomes was throwing ears off off the uh off the double decker bus to people in the crowd That's cops were saying a thing it was just no hold bars you can do whatever you want that day it was our day so, I mean, with all that money that Patrick Mahomes just got, I mean, is he going to be able to spend it? Like, what, what do you think is the most expensive house right now in Kansas City that he can 
spend money on. Oh, you know what I mean? Like he's not living in like a California or maybe like a New York where he can find like the a hundred million dollar penthouse or whatever. Yeah. I could I probably, wonder. He could probably find something for 20 mil. You think so? Yeah, we have we have some houses out here that are around. Um, it. That's and I can I can only imagine the size of those things just because like exactly. people aren't on top of each other. That's so sick. Exactly. Uh, so, Teef, my man, I don't know how much you heard about um, Ted Jones World, but we do have a vegan hot dog eating contest coming up. We are filming July thirty first at three thirty p.m. We have four competitors, and it'll be uh, released shortly on YouTube. Uh, within the following days to come it'll be on spotify apple podcast but we're getting super pumped we're gonna have all these people eat vegan hot dogs 10 minutes they can dip it in water double dog whatever and and <laughs> and the uh total amount of hot dogs eaten across all the contestants we will donate um double the amount to a shelter of their choice so amazing That's awesome. we're, we're super pumped about that event teeth thank you so much for coming on latif arnold Straight out of straight out of Kansas, um, you know. I know we talk a lot about, uh, excuse me, a lot about people listening in the middle of the country, but um, here you go. You guys got one one of your own from the Midwest, Latif Arnold. Thank you so much, man. We appreciate you coming on the Ted Jones World podcast and uh, stay fit, bro. Can we see? Can we see your abs really quick? Can we see the abs. You got a good angle. You got some good light. Let's see them. Oh damn! You guys better be checking this out on YouTube because that was quite the shot. Latif, I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much, man. All right, man. Have a good one. You too.